has quit a diet within the first week. But a groundbreaking website based on research from Yale University in America has found a way of getting three quarters of dieters to achieve their goals. How? By putting their own money on the line. There's no way I'm going to lose that. Not for anybody. There's no chance he's getting hands on my money. To road test whether this revolutionary approach can motivate us Brits, I'm setting up my own radical experiment. It's a weight loss war. Each week, two dieters with wildly clashing beliefs. A namby-pamby animal rights mentalist. I'm entitled to those benefits. It's just damn right laziness as far as I'm concerned. Will stake their own cash on shedding more fat than their rival. Let's get your weight first of all. And whoever loses has to watch their opponent spend the lot. I am not going to stand next to you while you are shooting your things. If she thinks she's going to use my money for a tattoo, she's having a laugh. But there'll be competition. Step up the pace. Opposition. That is the end of my participation with this gentleman. And mind games. I'm trying to out-psych Harriet. Andrew has really gone under my scene today. As they battle to lose the fat. You can't achieve something in a short space of time. Yeah, like a heart attack. And safeguard their cash from their worst nightmare. They genuinely want to spend my money on that. The more I get annoyed, the more I'm determined to win. As a doctor, I've met countless patients who just can't seem to shed the pounds or keep them off. And their problem? Well, it's often lack of willpower. So I'm going to show how motivation can turn Britain's diet disasters into weight loss winners. I'm challenging two chalk and cheese slimmers from the northwest to go head to head in a fight to lose the most fat. With 500 pounds of their own money at stake, the two of them will be stopping at nothing to ensure victory over their diet rival. If it works, it's great. If not, I'm just a nut a sitting in a bath. And as they battle it out, I'll be looking at the latest gadgets that offer a sci-fi fix to Britain's weight problem. He's talking to you. As well as asking if we should be copying other countries' hardcore fat-fighting campaigns to help beat obesity. I would want to tell people full on in the face what it is they should expect if they continue to get fatter and fatter and fatter. But now, time to meet the first of this week's heavyweight contenders. Hello, you're in there somewhere. 35-year-old Carl runs his own small business in Liverpool. I'm a gay scouse dog groomer and I absolutely love my animals. You're going to be a good girl today. I love dog grooming because there's never ever a single day that you go into work and it's exactly the same. There's good bits about it, like I think there's bad bits, but most of the time it's cleaning up wee and walking the dogs and when you bath them, they go and have a little um, accident and then rolling it and you're just like, oh, you know, he's bathing you again. Carl loves animals so much, he's recently become a vegan, but he doesn't exactly conform to the popular image of the lean, mean health freak. Yeah, hon. When I became vegan, I started eating loads of junk food and ready-prepared meals. I've got into the habit of just coming in and grabbing an ice cream or just a big fat pie sandwich. Scoop the filling out of the middle, slap it on the bread, dip it in, Bob's your uncle. Thanks to this staple diet of vegan junk, Carl's hit 16 stone, a weight that isn't just hurting his health. I've been single for four years now. It'd be nice to find someone and settle down. The Liverpool gay scene can be really harsh, you say, for fat people. I don't want to be, like, 40 and single, and so I need to get me act together. To help Carl finally lose weight, there's only one opponent who I felt could truly motivate this animal-loving vegan. Andrew is a field sports enthusiast and former gamekeeper who loves the rural way of life. I love shooting, particularly game, because when you shoot them, you can eat them. I am an animal lover, but they do have a place. A dog is a dog, a cat is a cat, and a deer is a meal. As well as feasting on the forest creatures he shoots, Andrew enjoys supersized cereal and shakes. All too frequent takeaways. What she ordered? Lamb curry, chips. And, as a lorry driver, regular roadside fry-ups. But that's not the only reason the pounds have piled on. 
Two years ago, Andrew and his wife Andrea had a little boy, Harry, who was born with a serious heart condition. We spent several months in hospital. It was a case of if a nurse came in, you popped out and grabbed a Snickers or a Mars bar or a pint of milk. Fortunately, Harry pulled through, but he still needs a lot of care, which is why Andrew feels now more than ever he should tackle his weight problem. The day he was born, we, told, we were told that he wasn't coming home, and I want to be with him as long as we can. Sorry. It's clear that both Andrew and Carl are desperate to break the cycle of diet failure. But the key to successful dieting is not just know-how, it's also staying power. And that's something that they've both struggled with. I've tried Slim and World, Weight Watchers, Juice Diets, Slim Fast, the Atkins Diet, Protein Diet, Beans and High Fibre Foods. I've got Slim Fast in the cupboard there. <laughs> A recent survey suggests that by the age of 45, the average slimmer will have tried and failed 61 different diets. So Carl and Andrew's story is far from unique. My theory is that the cause of their past failures is lack of motivation. So I'm upping the stakes and asking them to put their own money on the line. 500 pounds of it. 500 pounds is a lot of money. I like to think I could spend it on stock. I could spend it on like employing someone. It is a big amount of money, like sort of thing to be risking. Family man Andrew's gambling with money that has extra significance. I've asked my wife if I could smash her money box, which was actually for her shoes. Yay. The Lebutin fund is nearly as important as breathing. Seriously. <laughs> you don't know how important it is. You better bloody win. With the stakes set, I'm bringing my rivals together for the first time. Nice to meet you. Come on in. To find out the scale of the task they face. Andrew, you've arrived. Welcome. I'm Christian. Come on through. I'm Christian. It's time to weigh up the enemy. Right, guys, welcome. This is the moment you brought your dosh. Yep. You brought 500 pounds in notes. Lovely. Money banked. Next up, the dreaded scales. Just keep nice and still for me. As Carl and Andrew are starting from very different heights and weights, I'm judging this competition on the proportion of body fat lost rather than total pounds dropped. You're done. You can climb off as well. Thank you. So I'm measuring my diet rivals to find out just how much fat both are carrying now. Andrew? Your body fat percentage is coming out at 40%. If we convert that into a weight, it means you're carrying around 53 kilos of fat. 53 kilos is a staggering amount. The fat alone on Andrew's body weighs roughly the same as a teenage boy. Carl, your body fat percentage is coming out at 33%. That converts to 34 kilos of your weight is fat. A third of Carl's entire body weight is made up of fat, and his body fat percentage is twice that of the average man. Both now have six weeks to lose a larger proportion of fat than their enemy if they want to win this competition and hold on to their cash. So what I've got planned for you next is you're now going to go off and see how your rival is planning on spending your money. I want you to pay really good attention to this. If it annoys you, say so. Keep it, channel it, because that, I think, is gonna be your biggest chance of success. All right, go and get yourselves changed. There's no chance he's getting hands on my money, because I know we'll spend it on something that I'm gonna hate. After meeting him today, he's not taking money anywhere. He's giving it to me. With the battle lines drawn, Andrew's finding out where his wife Andrea's shoe fund might end up if he loses the competition. All right, what's this place then? We'll find out shortly. Carl's brought Andrew to Weatherig's Animal Sanctuary, home to an orphaned fox named Dixie, whose parents were shot by hunters. When I win the competition, I'm going to give the money to these guys and they're going to build an enclosure for Dixie and all of Dixie's little mates. Think it's a good idea? 
I really don't think it's a good <laughs> idea. So what would you have done with Dixie? I would have put her down from day one. It's weird how and you can look at Dixie and think like think I would just shoot it. Carl spending my money on saving foxes make me vomit. Time for Andrew to reveal where Carl's money will go if he vanquishes his vegan foe. Go on through to uh, an Aladdin's cave for somebody like me. That's a 243. It's a recognised deer calibre. I can also use it on fox. Carl's face. Well, it was a picture. I'm going to take your money and spend it on this. There's a bit of night vision kit that enables me to shoot at night. It makes me more efficient. There's no way you're spending my cash on that piece of crap. End of. Shooting with that night vision scope was amazing. That's where his money's going. Thank you, Carl. Can you smell that? Smell what? Gordite. It's amazing. You can smell something. It seems like my experiment is working. Andrew has really got under my skin today. Having seen where their money might end up, both rivals are more motivated than ever. I'm going to do every single thing in my power to stop Andrew spending my cash on that. Pooch-loving vegan Carl and gun-toting meat-eater Andrew are going head-to-head -head in a unique experiment designed to ensure they'll stick to a diet like never before. I'm getting them to take part in an experiment designed around a groundbreaking website based on research done at the University of Yale in America. It seems that three quarters of the dieters who signed up to the website succeeded in losing weight because they put their own cash on the line. More than 80% went the diet distance if they risked losing their cash to a cause they hate. I'm using Carl and Andrew's wildly opposing views on animal rights to spur them on. This is the moment. They've both stumped up £500 in a game where winner takes all and can splash the cash in a way guaranteed to rile their rival. Carl spending my money on saving foxes makes me vomit. There's no way you're spending my cash on that piece of crap. It's time for my rivals to draw up their strategies. To avoid unhealthy crash dieting, both Andrew and Carl must stick to a minimum of 1,500 calories a day. But beyond that, I'm leaving it entirely up to them. Let battle commence. Determined to ensure that wife Andrea's shoe fund isn't sacrificed in vain, Andrew's approach is impressively methodical. I have six meals a day. I'm prepping my meals so that I'm sort of two or three meals in front of myself. It's the way ahead, I think. Andrew's healthy home-cooked meals will be measured with a military precision, so he knows exactly how many calories he's consuming. His neat little helpings of lean meats, healthy veg and limited carbs prove that Andrew clearly knew how to diet. What he's lacked is the all-important motivation. How many calories are you on a day? 2,300 to 2,500. You're going to be able to stick to this? I've got to do it. Not just for the money, but for myself and the boys. Well, it is important for Andy to lose weight. I think he's more frightened for not being around for Harry and Matthew than me. To up his fitness levels and help fight the fat, our huntsman's hitting the gym hard twice a day, five times a week. We're going to go for eight, followed by a drop set, so it's going to be a lot more iron intensity. And personal trainer Simon has a trick up his sleeve to boost that all-important motivation. Let's take a look at Carl. Is a vegan going to beat you? Keep going. No, no vegan's going to beat me. It did push me on that a little bit more. It was hurting, but I didn't feel that too much. No, he doesn't deserve that dog. It's a working dog. Should be killing foxes, that. Andrew's plan is a solid, sensible approach and should mean he'll drop at least a pound of fat each week. Think about it in spending your money. Not a chance. Over in Liverpool, Carl's adopting a more unconventional strategy for success. I'm not calorie counting, I say in the slightest. I don't think sitting down, working out all the calories and for absolutely everything I eat is going to benefit me in any way, shape or form. Carl's plan basically involves switching out vegan junk for healthier options. 
Instead of my usual big plate of chips, I've decided to go for the jacket potato and salad on the side. But aspects of his diet sound a bit bananas. My fruit plan is, I think it's the best way to get energy. I'm eating about probably 8 to 15 pieces of fruit every day. I'll eat like 10 bananas in a day. Yesterday I had, I think, about 14 tangerines. Unbeknownst to Carl, bananas contain between 80 and 100 calories each. So his 10-a-day habit could equate to as many as 1,000 calories just in fruity snacks. My diet's not really about restricting food. It's more about concentrating on the exercise rather than the food. When it comes to exercise, rather than a punishing gym regime like Andrew's, Carl's relying more on pounding the pavement and extra walkies. Just sit. Sit down, good girl. Sit. I'm wearing a wristband designed to count how many steps to do in a day. The plan is I'm going to hit 15,000 steps a day, which should burn off quite a few calories. <laughs> Easy. But on today's trip out with co-worker Kelly, it seems it's not just calories that aren't being counted. I've lost the fit band. <laughs> Carl's approach is completely back to front. Exercise is important in losing weight, but it's more important at maintaining your weight once the pounds have been lost. Cutting calories is what's crucial, and Carl simply has no idea how many calories he's taking in. It's a sharp contrast to his diet rival's regimented gym routine and clinical calorie control. If I was a betting man, I'd be putting it all on Andrew. I'm testing the theory that willpower is the key to diet success. But it's little wonder that so many of us find it hard to keep our resolve faced with the mighty force of advertising. Walk down any busy street and you will be bombarded by advertising. It's on buses, it's on billboards and it's on vans. And it's a powerful tool to get us to change the way in which we behave, what we think, what we eat and where we go. So, should we be harnessing the mighty power of the global ad market to fight our obesity crisis? And if so, what type of ads will get results? I'm screening three different campaigns to a group of mums, dads and teenagers to find out. We love pop, but mum says we need to make some healthy swaps. First up, a UK TV advert, Change for Life. Last year, the government spent over two and a half million pounds on this family-friendly campaign that's designed to gently encourage people to change. But is the softly, softly approach persuasive enough? It doesn't really have an effect on me because, like, I can't um, compare myself to plasticine. Probably not hard-hitting enough or deep enough or educating enough. They don't seem convinced, and neither does spokesperson for the National Obesity Forum, who wants future campaigns to have more bite. I would not have it as the namby-pamby stuff which we're being served up at the moment. I would want it to be hard-hitting. I would want to tell people full-on in the face what it is they should expect if they continue to get fatter and fatter and fatter. In the US, they're already trying this hard-hitting approach. But would it work here? This advert was part of New York City's $2 million shop campaign, which during its run led to a fall in the number of kids consuming sugary drinks. I think it was more hard-hitting, and I think that's what we need in this country, because we're a bit too pink and fluffy. It made you go, ooh, and all of a sudden you're thinking, actually, that is what you're putting into your body. And in Atlanta, they've gone even further. They starkly show you how a lifetime of fatty foods can kill you. All right, what do we got? Just came in. Heart attack. 5'9", 300 pounds, 32 years old. How the hell does that happen? <gasps> but will it be too much for my test audience to stomach? <sighs> can I get a... Uh... Could be developing diabetes. You have to make a change. So as an advert trying to get you to wake up and change, did it speak to you? Yes, yes, very yes. much. Being obese myself, 
it actually, yeah, it was like, wow, it was a little bit of a wake-up call. In fact, it made me put the popcorn down because <laughs> yeah. I felt so guilty eating that. I decided that it really brought it home to me, definitely. The harder hitting the campaign, the more the group thought it would make them change their ways. So should we in the UK be spending more on tougher ads? The creative of the New York campaign thinks so. If you think about the fact that one case of type 2 diabetes costs society about $600,000 in medical costs, even if we got three people not to continue drinking sugary drinks and therefore avoid type 2 diabetes, the campaign paid for itself. Advertising can be expensive and good campaigns can cost millions, but it's also highly effective. With the NHS spending £6 billion a year tackling obesity, I think the right ads could be money well spent. And it seems that the more shocking the advertising, the more effective it is at persuading us to make changes. In the northwest of England, cereal diet dropouts Carl and Andrew are locked in a weight loss war. They're testing a groundbreaking technique which puts the focus on motivation rather than what's on the menu. The approach developed by experts at Yale University is based on the theory that the pain of losing money hurts more than the joy of winning it. In terms of dieting, this means we're more likely to stick at it if our hard-earned cash is at risk. And even more likely to stay on track if we'll lose it to a cause or person we dislike. In the States, Democrat dieters are spurred on by the thoughts of their dollars going to a Republican cause. One of the most popular, the George W. Bush Presidential Library. For Carl and Andrew, there's £500 in play, and the rivals have been spurred on by their dramatically different views on animal rights. It's week three and midway through the contest. In Lancashire, Andrew's sticking to his strict regime and wife Andrea is feeling the benefits. Before, when we used to hug, my hands used to be like this. Oh. Didn't they? Now we can, we can overlap. All right. Yeah. While both are proud of Andrew's achievements, at times it has been hard for the family. I don't think anyone realises how hard it is. Look how much time it takes getting prepared for it or getting up at the crack of dawn. I'm really, really happy that he's doing great in that, but we're really not seeing him very much. Got to do it between us. Yeah, we've got it. We've got to do. We've got to keep it going as a family. You all right? You want a tissue? It's all going the right way now. I, I just More say exercise. I have tremendous guilt that I'm not doing it with you. Don't worry about that. Yeah, I've got to smash this. I've got to win it by a lot. Across in Liverpool, diet rival Carl is also struggling with his healthy eating regime. I'm feeling a little bit fed up of diet food. And I'm thinking to myself, just have a little bit of ice cream or, you know what I mean, some packs of Starbase. <laughs> but I'm going to be good. It's clear Carl is finding this tough, and I'm concerned that he's still not counting calories. Hello, Carl. Hello, So, it's time for a pep talk. Tell me about the sorts of things you're eating. A lot of jack potatoes, a lot of, like, vegetable curry, and loads and loads of fruit. How many bananas could you get through in a day? Uh, and only it's about eight, let's say, to ten bananas. That's 800 to 1,000 calories a day. That's half your recommended daily calorie intake in those snacks you are having. Yeah, it is quite high. I don't want you to get conned into thinking if it's off a tree, it's going to make me slim, and if it's in a packet, it won't, because that's a bit of a myth. We need to count more. Possibly. Yes. Seeing as you're clueless when it comes to calories. OK. Carl just seems to be all over the place. He's got no idea of how many calories are in things. His general idea of healthy eating is to eat lots of fruit and vegetables, but it's going to have to take a lot more than that if his rival is Andrew. And I'm, um, at the moment, I think my money's safe with Andrew. Spurred on by my warning, Carl's discovering just how his calorie count could be affecting his chances in the competition. Lunch. With help from friend Mandy. Your fruit basket was around 800, you said? Jack potato, 
278 calories. Beans for the tin is 201. OK, you're up to 4,000 calories a day. And that's eating healthy. I've just realised that sort of a unique moment, <laughs> even if I did go to the gym, I'm not going to burn off that many calories. You're using a quarter of your daily amount on fruit. So if you take this fruit away to have something more filling, for lunch, you could have one jack of potato and half a tin of beans, because that's all you would need, and a salad. You're saving 7,000 a week, hence weight loss. By the end of this process, I'm going to be able to tell you how many calories are in it. <laughs> this shocking 4,000 calorie revelation is the wake up call Khan needed. But is it too little too late? He'll need to pull out all the stops to stand any chance of making up lost ground and defeating his meat loving foe. Whilst I believe motivation is key to winning the weight loss war, should dieters want a little extra help? Well, they're currently spoilt for choice. From gizmos and gadgets to pills and powders, the market is flooded with products aimed at people desperate to lose weight. It's been estimated that female dieters spend around £500 a year battling the bulge, but is it money well spent? We took some of the latest diet gadgets and gave them to a group of volunteers to see if they'd be inspired to lose weight and if they'd spend their own money on them. Our focus group are four teaching assistants from Rochdale and they're up for test driving some of the more interesting products available. I'm trying to lose weight at the moment because I'm going through IVF with my partner, so I'd like to lose weight for that. As you get older, it gets a little bit harder and the motivation's got to be there as well. We're always on diets. The ladies have never tried a diet gadget before, so what will they make of an audiovisual sci-fi headset? The makers say creates a relaxing environment so you'll eat less. Oh, it's talking to you, is it? The Kitchen Safe, a lockable storage jar with a built-in timer designed to keep treats away from hungry hands. This cookie jar's got a lock on it. That's a good idea, really, isn't it? Yeah, it is. An electronic fork that alerts you when you eat too fast so you slow down and end up eating less. Oh, well, I won't mind giving Don't that know. up and blue tinted glasses that claim to make food look unappetizing. <laughs> like John Lennon with it. <laughs> the gizmos range in price from £5 to £250, but I'm keeping the cost a secret. After one week, will the ladies be convinced enough to shell out their own cash? I'm not too sure about wearing these at mealtimes, but I'm going to give it a go. I don't know what my husband's going to say about them. This is going to be lie down relaxation, I think, and listening. So let's see if this works for me. The ladies take a selection of the gadgets home and put them to the test. It's not telling me I'm doing it too fast at the minute. So it's like relaxing and calming yourself and listening to them. So I think this is to hypnotise you. I won't get one free. So what do I do with this bag? Because it's not going to fit in there. I've got to make the decision as to whether I'm going to be wearing my uh, blue tinted glasses. Guess what? No, I'm not. Not exactly a positive start, but I'll be back later to get their final judgment. It's week three and the midway point in my fat feud. Carl and Andrew haven't seen each other for seven days, so to keep their rivalry alive and motivation high, I've arranged a day out in the country. And Andrew wants to make the most of it. I've come here to shoot. Have you? And I've come here to... Not out on meet. I've got no problem with you going round, tell me what you're doing, explain the countryside and all that stuff. I said, but there's not a chance of taking a gun with it. I'm not trying to force you to do anything. I'm, you can't I'm... force me to do all. He must be the safest person on the planet. He's passionate about what he believes. It's not an educated belief. The V shoots in at him, slashing his tires and going home. Hey! <laughs> when he comes back with something, that's it, the competition's over. Did you just shoot in at him? No. Great. It's a good thing. 
Bringing Carl and Andrew together has worked out just as I planned. I think he despises me as I despise him. They seem more determined than ever to ensure their money doesn't go to their enemy. It's personal now. He's not getting my money to go shooting. And it's as simple as that. Spurred on by his trip to the countryside and rocked by the revelation he was packing away 4,000 calories a day, Fruit Fiend Carl's doing all he can to fight back. Whoa. Calories are now being counted. Big potato, 250. Helpings halved. I've got this new portion plate, just to keep an idea on what I'm eating. And as Carl's no longer snacking like a silverback, the banana bowl's been dramatically downsized. I've cut it down now to about four bananas a day, something like that, and then a couple of other pieces of fruit. All this means his calories have plummeted to 1,800 a day. Carl's also upped his exercise with more walking, extra gym visits, and even a spot of paddle boarding. Carl may not be a natural on the water, but he started to look like a very convincing comeback kid with a newfound confidence to match his motivation. It's time for me to get my act together. Andrew, I'm stepping up the game, so you better watch out. Across in Lancashire, Andrew's plan to measure out meals with military precision combined with a hardcore gym regime made him a clear front runner. But the dedicated family man has hit an unhappy bump in the road. On Tuesday, Harry spiked the temperature. So I phoned 999, Andy was on his way home, and he just made it to the back of the ambulance just as we were setting off. This is me and Harry. Turns out he's had a bit of a, a viral infection. I've already given antibiotics. Yeah. Seems to be responding to them fairly well. Hopefully, early tomorrow we'll be out of here. Yeah. Long hours spent in hospitals contributed to Andrew's recent weight gain. When we're in hospital, we live off vending machines. Cafeteria food isn't great. It's always chips, chips and gravy. Thankfully, Harry will soon be better and back home, but this has been an unfortunate setback for Andrew. With Carl finally getting up to speed, this is starting to look like a real competition with everything to play for. Committed carnivore Andrew and his vegan nemesis Carl are in the midst of a weight loss war as part of my revolutionary new plan to put money and motivation at the heart of dieting. Both stand to lose 500 pounds of their own money if they fail to shift the most fat in a contest designed to boost their staying power and help them stick to their diets. You better bloody win. What's spurring them on is a deep dislike of what the other stands for. I've come here to shoot. Have you? And I've come here to... Not out on me. There's not a chance of taking the gun with it. For the past six weeks, my rivals have been cutting calories, pounding pavements and feeling the burn, all with the aim of shedding enough pounds to outdo their opponent and emerge as my champion. But who is my weight loss winner? Let's find out as I call time on the contest and bring Carl and Andrew together once more. Aha, you've arrived. Welcome back. Carl, nice to see you, Andrew. Let's go and see how you've been going on. Go and get changed. I'll see you upstairs. I've just seen Andrew and he looks as though he's lost quite a bit of weight. So I'm actually um, a little bit worried. I work really hard. You know, I've even up my game. I really want to win. It's either going to turn out to be a fabulous day or one of those days you wish you hadn't woke up. This is it. This is the big moment. Just remind me, Carl, what did £500 mean to you? That's a lot. I say it's a lot of money, like something, you know, go on holiday, say, you know, just different stuff, get new clothes, and I'm skinny. All right. And Andrew, what did it mean to you? 18 months of saving for a present for my wife. Ouch. All right, we need to get you weighed. Remember, I'm judging this contest on the proportion of body fat the contenders have dropped. I'm happy. Andrew, come on up. Whoever's lost the largest percentage of their fat will be my winner. All right. Thank you. OK. 
Carl. It's Andrew. As things stand, you are both neck and neck. There is no difference between you. You have lost 20% of your body fat. That is fantastic, but this is a competition and I need a winner. So, I'm going to give you more time. Didn't see that one coming. With this unexpected result, I'm giving them two extra weeks of time. The same rules still apply. A minimum of 1,500 calories per day and no crash dieting. Go and get yourselves changed and I'll Thanks. see you again. See you soon. Right on. Both will now need to redouble their efforts and maintain that crucial motivation for one last push if they want to win my War of the Wastelines. Earlier in the show, I asked four friends to road test a range of gizmos designed to help dieters. Oh my gosh! A self-locking food safe, a fork that slows your scoffing, a sci-fi visor that soothes hunger pangs away, and Lennon-inspired specs that make food look less appealing. The ladies have been trying the gadgets for a week, and I'm back to hear their verdicts. First up, the 30-pound kitchen safe that only unlocks at certain times to keep snacking to a minimum. So what did you think of this? Um, I didn't really like it. Um, I bought crisps to use with mine, and I could fit one bag in, but it was buy one, get one free, so I had an extra bag, which we didn't fit in there, so... So you sort of cheated. <laughs> kind of defeated the purpose, yeah. A, I don't like the fact that it's see-through. That's just mean. Yeah. You know it's there, you know you can't have it. So like naughty children, being told that you can't have it just makes you want it more. even more. Mm -hmm. Would you buy this and use this yourself? No, definitely not. Yeah, not for putting food in, no. No? All right, let's put that one down there. So the next things are these little groovy babies here. Will the five-pound blue-tinted glasses go down any better? So the idea is that there are very few blue foods, because blue isn't a very appetising colour, and perhaps if we see through blue glass at our food, it makes it less desirable to us. So you wore blue glasses to eat, and did you eat less because of it? Well, they might, it might look different, but it tastes exactly the same. It smells and exactly the same? If you've made a nice meal, mm. you're not going to not eat it because you've put your blue glasses on. So, no, uh, they're not for me. Not impressed, do you? <laughs> it's not doing it for you, is it? No. What about the £65 smart fork? Did it help them to eat less? It tells you if you're eating too fast or if you're overloading your fork as well. Just a light finger pressure on there, setting it off. You can see the red light going on straight away. Yeah. At first, when I did try it and it kept going to red, I tried to, you know, eat my food a little bit slower, but in mm. the end, I got fed up and just ignored just it and carry on. So the final gadget is these glasses which flash coloured lights and play you soothing music. They're designed really to try and change your mindset, aren't they, and mood. I put them on, I tried them. I put the earphones in. I did fall asleep, I think, at one point. Oh, there's that whale music again. And I did seem to hear, you need to be eating more fruit and vegetables. <laughs> oh, sorry. <All> right. <laughs> but you've got to be t determined to want to lose weight. I mean, it's sort of self-hypnosis in a way, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, I think they would work for some people. I just felt a bit silly with them. If I tell you that these cost £250, <laughs> would you buy them? Definitely not. Would you buy them? I wouldn't, no. Would you buy them? Definitely not. That's right. Let's get up. Well, none of the ladies seem particularly impressed with any of those gadgets, and my view is that you can spend all the money you like on the most high-tech gadget, but if you lack the willpower and you don't have any motivation, then those gadgets are going to be about as useful as a chocolate teapot. Having tied neck and neck in what was meant to be their final weigh-in, Carl and Andrew have embarked on one last push to grab victory over their opponent. In Lancashire, Andrew's sticking to his tried and tested approach, but cutting back even further. I've taken down my calorie intake to as close to 1,600 as possibly can. He's also now thrown himself back into a punishing gym regime and doubled the distance he walks every day. I'm now doing between 8 and 12 mile. They say no pain, no gain. In Liverpool, Carl is employing yet another highly unusual tactic to help him snatch victory from his rival. 
I've been doing everything I can, all the same stuff but cold. They've been riding me bike in jeans and t-shirt, drinking cold water, I say, with ice cubes in. Really, really, really cold. But that is the idea. I had a cold bath this morning, managed to stay in it for about six minutes. If it works, it's great. If not, I'm just a nutter sitting in a bath. Car's icy plunges may actually not be quite as ludicrous as they seem. Our bodies contain yellow fat, the toxic fat that builds up due to overeating. But they also contain thermogenic brown fat, and this fat can help to burn calories. It's stimulated by the cold, so Carl actually may be onto a winner. <sighs> Both rivals have pushed themselves hard in these last two weeks and over the course of the competition, but there can only be one winner. Andrew and Carl are coming together one final time for the definitive decision on who will be taking home the £1,000 jackpot. Guys, welcome back. Back in front of the dreaded scales. Carl, should we weigh you first? Both had lost a level pegging fifth of their body fat last time, but who will have lost a larger proportion at this crucial tie break weigh in? Okay, Andrew, let's go. You can step on. Thank you. Today, I do have a winner. So, Carl, you were carrying 34 kilos of fat. You have lost eight kilos. Fat. Carl started the contest carrying 34 kilos of fat. Going from pie muncher to carrot cruncher and keeping a close eye on calories has had a dramatic impact. Carl's fat is now down to 26 kilos. That's a drop of 8 kilos or 18 pounds and an impressive 23% reduction. But will it be enough to see off his rival? Andrew, you started off with 53 kilos of fat and you now only have 37.5 kilos of fat. So that means you've lost 15.5 kilos. And that means, Andrew, you are our winner. Very well done. Thank you. Carl, oh, well done. Andrew began the competition with 53 kilos of fat, setting his sights on trumping his opponent and adopting super strict self-control has helped him bring this down to 37.5 kilos, a drop of 15.5. That's almost two and a half stone and an astounding 30% reduction. Andrew's lost almost a third of the fat he was carrying at the start of this contest. Feeling amazing, I really am. You know, it's it, it's one of the better days of my life, and you know, it, all this hard work has paid off. Never have I seen two people work harder than you two. You gave it everything. The results that you have seen in terms of what it's done for your health are phenomenal. I would say that you are changed people. And you are fair dues to you. Oh, I'm slimmer, I'm happier, I'm more confident, and I'm going to change the rest of my life. I feel for Carl, I really do. He's put as much effort in as me. Take care. But that's how it goes. I wanted it more than him, and I got it. I knew this contest would be a powerful weight loss tool, but I underestimated just how much impact it would have on our rivals. I'm going to keep in touch with them and hope that they'll use what they've learned to continue to keep their weight off for good. I'm home. Guess what I got? I spent his money. I spent <laughs> his money. You happy? Oh, yeah. Coming home as a winner, they've been fantastic. Carl's money has bought me what I've always wanted, and, and that's thanks to motivation. I've had to beat him. Oh, it's been well worth it. Not only for this, but the amount of weight loss I've got and my health is, is immense. And Andrew is not the only one pleased with his spoils from the diet war. He looks great. Now he's got like a bit more energy and a new lease for life. He's, I, can, I, I hope he carries on and he enjoys it. 
if it's with us longer because he's healthier, then that's great as well. It's great for my boys, you know. Um, they're only young. Is Daddy a winner? What do you mean, no? <laughs> I'm very proud of you, Andy. While Carl didn't scoop the cash prize, he believes everything he got out of the diet battle still makes him a winner. At the end of the day, if I hadn't gone on that competition, I wouldn't have made the changes I made and I wouldn't feel the way I feel and I'd be a couple of stone heavier. So definitely a positive experience, like the thing, and I'm so glad I did it. Next time... I don't eat fruit and I don't eat vegetables. It's weight loss war... 95 calories. I just want to bite it. ...meets benefits battle... There's no excuse for not working at all, it's just laziness. ...as welfare queen Wendy takes on dedicated worker Debbie. She thinks she's going to use my money for a tattoo. She's having a laugh. ...in a nail-biting fight. She's just spurred me on to want to achieve more. ...to an emotional climax. <laughs> Well, to the same time next week. The sizeable struggle of those trying to live a normal life. Meet the shut-ins, Britain's fattest people, whenever it takes your fancy, with 4OD. Next tonight, if you can't handle your alcohol, you could spend a night in the cells, 24 hours in police custody. In a minute. <laughs>